The right to self-defense is a universal human right, even when the government disarms you. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Neil Widener. Today's video, we think, comes out of the UK. So listen, if you've got better news stories, any news stories at all, I had a hard time finding them, put them in the comments, would you? LuckyGunner.com is my go-to resource for in-stock, fast shipping ammunition. Whether you're looking for rifle ammo, handgun ammo, rimfire ammo, or shotgun ammo, go to LuckyGunner.com for the best place on the internet to find it all in stock and ready to ship. They have stood by us all in this ammo pandemic, given us great education via their YouTube channel and their ballistic testing as well. Go and check them out and find great ammo ready to ship at good prices. We have audio with the surveillance footage, rare as that is. Let's listen into it. Open the tool. No key. Open the tool. No key. This yard. We'll open the tool now. No key, man. We'll open the fucking tool. No key. We'll open the tool. 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 Open the you open. I got a fucking key, bro. How do you open? No key, I don't know. Where do you open? Where do you go? Sorry. Bro, open it. Open it now. Open no it. key, man. Bro, open the fucking door. How do you open no, it? No key. How do you open it then? How do you open it then? No key. You do. You open. You open. How? How? Open the tube. Open the tube. No, I didn't open it. Come in here. Open the tube. No key. Bro, listen. Open the tube. 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 Open the So in the end, this armed robbery cost the armed robber his steak knife and his sweatshirt. I don't think he got away with anything else other than bumps and bruises, though I have not found a great news story to actually verify that. I mean, I do gotta be honest with you, Neil. I wish that the government of the UK would respect its citizens' right to keep and bear arms. I mean, I mean it would be cool. I think it'd be better for them if they could, but uh, freedom's scary for some folks. Yeah. You know, Neil, I just want to start with the discussion here about the bluff because this guy, you know, shows him is the knife and then he's going to tell him, I want you to open the door. And multiple times for quite a while here, this guy's like, I don't have the key. I don't have the key. When the reality is we know you can key in a transaction and it'll open without the key. And, and while that, you know, kind of bought him some time and he ends up winning, I, I do think that was very risky and it would have been a perfectly valid response to just open the register and let him take what he wants to take because it's your life that's at stake here. Yeah, I mean, he sees the guy coming over the counter. He knows that he's going to be in really close proximity in just a few seconds. You know, I do, I, I'm with you. I think it's a big risk to to continue with the bluff at this point, not to just open the register and and take it. I mean, either either fully comply or fully resist. And at this point, it's we're kind of playing the fence here, trying to trying to buy some time. Now, what we find out that, is that it kind of worked to some degree, but man, there was a big risk there of him, you know, getting stabbed in the chest or the stomach or somewhere like that. And I, I'm not about that. Yeah, and we do see people who kind of straddle the fence there, they get hurt. You know, they say when you straddle the fence, you get splinters in places that you don't like. Now then, dude comes in who's just a bystander. Hey, I want to buy a pack of smokes or something. He sees that there's a robbery going on and he legit nopes out of there. He's just like, well, my bad, not my problem, not my circus, not my monkeys, as those old Polish, that old Polish proverb says. And, and listen, 
I think that some people are going to have a hard time with this with this guy, but you know what? That is a valid choice. I'm getting out of here because it's a risk to me, and I don't think it's necessarily the right choice, but I do think you should really think that through for yourself and talk to your loved ones about it so they know your boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this guy gets to make his decisions. This isn't his store. This isn't his stuff. It, it, he's got zero responsibility in this other than he probably needs to pay for some gas or something. Um, you know, uh, to, to nope out and then call the authorities is another choice to make. But these are kind of things that I think folks need to think through before they get into these situations. We hear from people so often, they're like, I was in the situation, I just reacted. I didn't know what to do. Uh, and in this case, this is what he did. And I don't know if he stepped out and just took off or, uh, or if he stepped out and made a phone call or not, but he had some options. I, I think stepping out and making a phone call is certainly a valuable option, right? Certainly a viable one. Now, of course, the guy behind the counter is like, hey, bro, help me out here. But again, man, you have the right to defend yourself. He has the right to defend himself. So I, I just want to say you get the right to make those choices for yourself. I'm not judging morality on either of those. Now, let's think about our guy here who decides now's the time. Now, he decides, hey, wait a minute. Guy's not paying attention to me. He's transferred the knife to his non-dominant hand. And my guess is, though we can't see on the camera, that he's holding it in such a way that this guy feels like, I can take this away from him. And you know what? I think that if you have that opportunity, then take that opportunity. Because when you can launch a counter ambush like this, if you can take the force, you know, the, the force advantage away from him, then you better think about, wait a minute, am I capable of fighting this guy with my hands and can I whoop his butt? But if you do feel like that, well then, hey man, ending that threat, I think is really wise. Yeah, you know, when he leaned down like that and started cleaning everything out, I was actually a little bit surprised he didn't just say, hey, hold my knife, because that's kind of what it looked like he was getting ready to do. Uh, and you could see that the, the guy behind the counter, our, you know, our shopkeeper there, you know, doing the math and deciding, hey, I think I can take this guy. I think I can take this knife. And then when he did, he took the knife and he dominated the guy. And that was, you know, it, now it was time. Uh, he did resist fully at that point. And I think that was the right call at that point. Yep. And I also want to say, OK, I sna he snatches that knife. Now he's going to start dominating him. I do think probably if this was in the US, depending on the jurisdiction in the United States, but in probably most of the US, if he had turned that knife on him quickly, like right in this second that he takes it away from him and stuck him with it three, four times, I think he probably would have gotten away with that legally from a legal perspective. I think he probably would have been okay. It's all one thing. This guy is still a big threat to me. You know, I can't guarantee that I am stronger than him and better than him and I need to use the force advantage that I had because he was threatening my life. He probably, in many jurisdictions, would have been okay with that, but not some. And certainly in England, he would have gotten a lot of long looks here and could have been facing charges himself. So that reminds me that you need to know the laws of your jurisdiction. And you also kind of need to think about, wait a minute, if I take his knife or his gun away from him, is he still a deadly threat? Again, I think in most of the US, probably okay in this you know, split second immediately afterwards, but not everywhere, bro. Yeah, I think some of these things, they're so fluid in, in the, the, each situation is completely different. And what we hear so often from folks that, that don't break these things down is, well, you said this in that scenario and you said this in, in this scenario and things change. And, and if you look at the fluidity of this, this is completely different. This is in another country with different laws. They govern completely different. Um, you know, knives are, are, are something that are, are strictly, uh, you know, controlled to some degree and man it's it's just one of those things where you've got to be thinking you've got to think through some of these things before they happen so that you can have some of the decisions made uh so that you can react and 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 go fully when you do yeah and and listen it would have been an okay thing if you said you know what wait a minute i'm gonna fight with just my hands even after taking this knife i'm gonna take this knife away from him and i'm gonna swedish chef it the heck out of here and hooby dooby flooby and then get after this guy with my hands. And I really do think no matter where he is, you notice right here as they come back on screen, our defender has that knife held short over the back of this guy. This guy's clearly trying to get away from him at this point, trying to, you know, he's kind of gonna jersey him here and he could have stuck that knife, you know, uh, short held into that guy's back and side real easy. I think even in the US, he would have had a hard time with that here because that guy is at this point, he's pretty clearly trying to get away. And I know that advice is gonna frustrate people, but, but remember, as good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people, we have to do the good, sane, sober, moral, prudent thing. And that is use proportionate force. Yeah, and, and you know, the thing is that people are like, uh, we'll talk about the fairness of it and well, he asked for it and all of that. 
What this shopkeeper does not have to do now is go hire a lawyer. He doesn't have to show up in court and explain a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you know, he is, there's no risk to him in this from a legal perspective. And what we see so often, uh, e even if we feel it's justified, and sometimes I feel like it is too, okay? I, I totally agree with folks when they say that, but the trouble that you bring with that, you bring on yourself. And now the punishment comes to you in the process that you have to go through uh, to get yourself clear of any charges or anything along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> And listen, I love what you said there, Neil, that, that this idea that says, hey man, he doesn't have to call an attorney, he doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff. There's value in that too. And, and listen, did this robber deserve uh, more than he got? Yeah, probably. He, you know, it, it would have probably been better for the entire community had he not. But just because somebody has earned a butt kicking doesn't mean that you can give it to them. Just because somebody has earned a stabbing doesn't mean that you can stab them. Remember that. You can, if, getting the criminal justice system pointed at you is a bad thing. Now this woman that shows up, she's in a different ballpark than the other guy. The first guy noped out of there. She decided, no, nah, I'm gonna get involved. I just wanna verify, hey, that's a valid choice too. She's gonna decide to get involved. Now that's it. Does she have mad kung fu skills? Does she know how to help in this particular case? Does she know what's going on? These are all risks that you need to consider. I'm glad she did. That shows me she's got some kind of high response and she's got some sand in her. But man, I think that uh, sometimes, Neil, we don't think about the risks that we take when we do this. Yeah, I, the, the thing that I see here is somebody that comes in that doesn't appear to have a ton of training, and I'm not, you know, I don't know for sure, but just based off of her physical response, I don't see a lot of training. I don't see her trying to wrap this guy up and control him in any way, shape, or form. It's mostly just kind of a tap on the back of, hey, 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 let's stop. Um, and, and while I appreciate all of that as well, the risk that she takes there is to, you know, for him to turn around and, and take a shot at her, and she doesn't know who's armed and who's not armed or any of that kind of stuff. You know, walking into a third party like this, you just don't know. Uh, and, and so you take a significant amount of risk. And while I applaud her for stepping in, and I think that's what I would tell myself I would do too, uh, it, you know, you probably should have some training to be able to handle folks if that's what you're going to do. Yeah. And, and listen, I wish, I, I think it would be the just thing for this shopkeep to be able to take that sweater and take that knife and put it in a shadow box and put it on the back wall of, you know, of his shop to remind people that, hey, this is what happens when you come after me. And, and I wish that he did. I know it's not gonna happen. It's gonna be sitting in an evidence locker instead. But you know what? He's one and oh against armed robbers and kudos to him for that. This guy had just big giant brass ones. Good for him, he covered his asp. Hey, if you've been holding off on trying the Asp Unlimited family of apps we have just unlocked, a free tier. We're calling it Active Self Protection Light. Hit the link in the description and you can sign up just with an email address. We got to know who you are. And that way you can get off of the YouTube algorithms, get some great exclusive content. It's not as much as the full unlimited, but it's a great way for you to connect with us and take deep dives. Hit the link in the description, sign up totally free.